He is the governor of Oxford Prison. A prisoner, named Evans, wants to give an O-level exam. So, he has called the secretary of the examinations board. It's a slightly unusual request, governor. But you should try to help. Just the one fellow, you say? Yes, a man named Evans. Last September, he started night classes in O-level German. He says, he is very eager to get some academic qualification. Is he any good? He was the only one in the class, so you can say, he had individual tuition. Let's give him a chance, shall we? That's a pleasure of you. What exactly is the procedure? Oh, don't worry about that. I will send you all the stuff. What's his name, you say? Evans. James Roderick Evans. Just one thing, Governor. He is not a violent kind of fellow, is he? No. There's no record of violence. He is pleasant. He has been a star at the Christmas concert. He just has an inborn hobby, of stealing. Probably. You can arrange a room where? No problem. He is in a cell of his own. If you have no objections, he can give the exam there. That's fine. And we could easily get a priest from St. Mary Mags, to invalidate. Yes. The church seemed to have a lot of priests there, isn't it? <laughs> then, the secretary had a final thought. Are you sure you can stop him from talking? <laughs> Thanks. Evans had escaped three times from prison. Because of this, the officers called him Evans the Break. At 8.30 p.m., on the 7th of June, his German teacher met him in the heavily guarded block. Guten Glück, Evans. Sorry? I said, good luck. Good luck for tomorrow. Oh. Thank you, I mean, thank Sean. You have no chance of passing the O-level exam, of course, but... I may surprise everybody. Next morning, at 8.30 a.m., Evans had two visitors. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. This is indeed an honor. Mr. Jackson is the senior prison officer on D-Wing. He and Evans have become warm enemies. On the side, stood Officer Stevens, a rude-looking man, only recently appointed the job. And how is our little Einstein this morning, then? Wasn't he a mathematician, Mr. Jackson? And I think he was a Jew, Mr. Jackson. Give me a chance, Mr. Jackson. I was just going to shave when you came in. It reminds me, Mr. Stephens. Make sure you take his razor out of the cell when he has finished shaving. Clear? One day, he will do us a good, and cut his bloody throat. Mr. Jackson? Was it you, who took my nail scissors away? And your nail file, too. Look. Orders of the Governor, Evans. Do you want to complain? You've half an hour to smarten yourself up, Evans, and take that bloody hat off. My hat? Huh. Do you know, Mr. Jackson, it's the only thing that has ever brought me any kind of luck. Kind of lucky charm, if you know what I mean. And today I thought, well, with my exam, and all that. Just this time. And get shaving. At 8.45, Stuart McCleary, who was assigned as his exam invalidator, left for the place. It was quite cold, so he wore a black overcoat. He had a small suitcase, including a sealed paper envelope, a yellow invalidation form, a special authentication card, and a knife for cutting papers. The two-hour examination was scheduled to start at 9.15 a.m. Evans was shaving his face when Stevens brought two tables, chairs for the exam. Jackson told him, Behave yourself, boy. And these... Jackson pointed to the photographs on the wall. Off. I was going to take them down. A priest, isn't he? The man who is coming to sit in, 
I mean. And how do you know that? Well, I had to sign forms, didn't I? Can I ask you something, Mr. Jackson? Why did they have to surveil me, in this cell? He pointed his head at the microphone above the door. They didn't do neat job. It's easily visible. They don't trust me. They're taking no chances, Evans. Nobody would take any chance with you. Who is going to listen to voice? I'll tell you who is going to listen. It's the governor himself. He don't trust you a bloody inch, and nor do I. I'll be watching you like a hawk, Evans. Just one more thing, Einstein. Yeah? What's that? Good luck. At the main gate, Stuart McCleary signs his name in the visitor's book. He walked with a prison officer to D-Wing, where he was greeted by Jackson. Get Evans Razor. Well, keep your eyes fixed. Stevens took McCleary upstairs, and finally stood before a cell door, opened the hole and looked inside. That's him, sir. Stevens took the key, and opened the cell lock. It was 9.10 a.m., when the governor switched on the microphone receiver. He instructed Jackson, to warn Evans about it. Here, the cell is locked, all the prison officers are on alert. Amongst other duties, the invalidator had to ensure the strictest silence. But still that doubt. Might Evans try to take advantage of McCleary? The governor sat up. It's good that Evans has no weapons. But what about McCleary? What if the innocent McCleary has brought in something? A knife, perhaps? And what if Evans uses the weapon to capture him? He reached for the phone and told his worry to Jackson. Can you come outside for a minute, McCleary, sir? You too, Stephens. Sir, the governor is worried that you may have brought in a potential weapon, which Evans might use. Jackson lightly checked McCleary's clothes. Something hard here, sir. My reading glasses. Then, Jackson checked his suitcase. He picked up each envelope. But one object in McCleary's suitcase puzzled him. He held up a half-inflated rubber ring. Do you mind telling why you've brought this, sir? You thinking of going for a swim, sir? If you must know, I suffer from hemorrhoids, and when I'm sitting down for some time, very sorry, sir. I didn't mean to. Er, uh, he found the knife. It's better keep it with me, if you don't mind, sir. It was 9.18 a.m. It was clear that the examination was going to begin late. You've got to watch? Yes, sir. I'll be telling you when to start, and again, when you've five minutes left. All right? There is plenty more of writing paper, if you need it. Now, write the name of the paper, 021-1, in the top left corner. In the top right corner, write your index number, 313. And in the box just below, write your center number, 271. All right? 9.20 a.m. Now, I'm going to... He is going to stay here, is he? Mr. Jackson has given me strict instructions to... How can I concentrate on my exam? With someone breathing down my neck? Christ. Sorry, sir, I didn't mean... The governor heard the words. He made call to Jackson. Jackson? Ah, good. Get Stevens out of the cell, will you? I think we're overdoing things. As you wish, sir. 9.25 a.m. McCleary announced that the exam has started. At 9.40 a.m., the examination board rang, and the assistant secretary asked to speak to the governor. Hello. Assistant secretary of exam board this side. Oxford Prison? Yes. There is a correction slip, which some fool had forgotten to place in the exam package. Could the governor please? Yes, of course. I'll put you to Mr. Jackson in D-Wing. Hold the line a minute. Was this the sort of the thing the governor had feared? Was the phone call a fake? Some signal? Some secret message? The governor could check that. 
he dialed the number of the examinations board. He heard the sound of line engaged. Two minutes later, he heard some whispers in the cell from the microphone. He heard, Will you please stop writing for a while, Mr. Evans, and listen carefully. Note the correction. On page 3, line 15, the fourth word should read, Goldman, not golden, and the whole phrase thus read, Zum golden and lowen, not zum golden lowen. I had taken German in my sixth form, and I remember about the agreements of adjectives. The phone rang. It was from court. They needed a prison van, and some prison officers. Remand case. All the time, Stevens looked through the hole at intervals, to check if everything was okay. Every time, same scene. Evans, his pen in his lips, staring towards door. At 10.50 a.m. Please, sir. Please, sir. Would you mind if I put a blanket over his shoulders, sir? It's cold, isn't it? Okay. At 11.20 a.m. Only five minutes are left, Mr. Evans. At 11.22 a.m., there was a call from the governor. Stevens picked up the phone and listened to the orders. Stevens was ordered to accompany McLeary to the prison gate after the exam was over. At 11.25 a.m. Stop writing, please. Put your sheets in order. Thank you very much, sir. Was it all right? Not too bad. Good. Mr. Stephens. Has Evans' exam gone well? Oh. I don't think so. After accompanying McLeary to the prison gate, Stevens was happy, because... The governor asked me to see McLeary off, and not Jackson. I'll go to canteen for a cup of coffee. But first, I should take a last look at Evans. He entered D-Wing, and saw from the peephole into the cell. There lay the man on Evans' chair, with blanket and blood, which was dripping from the small beard. Mr. Jackson. There was no doubt that the man was McLeary. But who was the man who went out to prison with Stevens? Evans? Evans escaped. McLeary took a handkerchief and held it to his bleeding head. Jackson arrived and sent Stevens to ring to the police and the ambulance. Don't worry about the ambulance. I'm all right. I'm all right. Get the police. I know. Where he? Get the governor. I know. I know where Evans... Sirens were sounding, prison officers made orders, doors were locked, and phones were ringing everywhere. Within a minute, McCleary, being supported by Jackson and Stevens, reached the prison yard. We must get you to the hospital immediately. You've called the police? Yes, yes. They're on their way. But... I'm all right. I'm all right. Look. Look here. He opened the German paper, which he had picked from the cell, and showed the governor. It's there. Do you see? On the last page of the question paper, a photocopied sheet was superimposed. This was what McLeary was trying to tell. On the page, German text was written, which translates as, You must follow the plan. The important point in time is, three minutes before the end of the examination. Don't hit him too hard. A fast approaching car stopped at the prison yard. From the car, came out Carter. Detective Superintendent Carter. What the hell is happening, sir? Christ. Who has hit him? Ellsfield Way, officer. I know where Evans. What? Take him with you. If you think he'll be all right, he is the only one who seems to know what is happening. Carter opened the back door and helped McCleary go inside. The car led away. In the last lines of the German text was written, From Ellsfield Way, drive to the Headington Roundabout. And do you know? The examinations board was in Ellsfield Way. Means, someone from the board must have been involved in the escape plan. The photocopied page pasted on question paper. The correction slip.
I don't need to tell you what has happened, do I? Which of you two stupids was it, who took Evans for a nice little walk to the main gates, and waved him bye-bye? It was me, sir. Just like you told me, sir. What? Just like I told you, you say? What the hell? When he rang, sir, and told me to. When was that? You know, sir. About three minutes before the end of the exam. You blithering idiot, man. It wasn't me who rang you. Don't you realize? Do you remember? In the German text, was written that, the important point of time, is three minutes before the end of the exam. Means, it was a fake call, to distract the officers. He turned to Jackson. As for you, Jackson. How long have you been pretending you've got a brain, eh? Well, I'll tell you something, Jackson. Your skull is empty. Absolutely empty. It was you, who had spent two hours in Evans' cell yesterday. It was you, who had reported that there was nothing hidden. Then how had Evans managed to get a false beard, spectacles, etc., to pretend to be McCleary? He also had some sort of weapon, with which he had given McCleary such a terrible blow. Org. A prison van stopped. He again read the last line of the German text. From Ellsfield Way, drive to the Huddington Roundabout, where you go straight over, and make your way to... New Graben. New Graben? Where on the earth is it? Does it mean New Grave? New something. Newberry. God, yes. Driver. Take Jackson and Stevens, to St. Aldate's police station. There, ask for Bell. Chief Inspector Bell. Got that? The driver told Bell all the facts, and sent him to talk to the governor on phone. Inspector Bell said, they will get Evans. What a beautiful plan it all had been. What a clever fellow Evans is. Although he was careless, as he left that question paper behind. But then, we all made our mistakes somewhere. Now, very very shortly, Mr. Clever Clever Evans, will be back inside the cell. Carter. Sir? McLeary had spotted Evans, driving off along Ellsfield Way. We got the number, and chased him. But at Headington Roundabout, we lost him. He must have returned back to the city. No. He's on his way to Newberry. But why do you think that? Evans had left the question paper in the cell. On the last page, is written a message. It says, from the Huddington Roundabout, he will go to Newberry. It was a police job now, not his. The governor was just a good for a giggle governor, that was all. By the way, Carter. I hope you managed to get McCleary to the hospital all right. Yes. He is in Radcliffe Hospital now. Then, the governor rang the Radcliffe. McCleary, you say? Yes. He is a priest. I don't think there's anyone. Yes, there is. You'll find one of your ambulances picked him up, from Ellsfield Way. Oh, that. We sent an ambulance, but when we got there, the fellow had gone. No one seemed to know where he was. Just vanished. Later, they found the real McLeary, at his study. He was tied on the chair, and his mouth was blocked. He said, he had been there, since 8.15 a.m., when two men came, and tied him. Inquiries in Newberry produced nothing. Everyone in the prison knew what had happened. It was not, that Evans appeared like McLeary, who had walked out. It was Evans, who impersonated McLeary, who stayed in the cell. He didn't hit any McLeary. He was himself, pretending to be McLeary, telling them he knew where Evans has gone. When Carter called the ambulance, he escaped. The fish and chips were delicious. I will return to the hotel I've booked. Hotel Golden Mine. The receptionist wasn't the same girl who had booked his room. My keys. He thanked God that everything had gone smoothly. 
in the car, he had found everything his friends had promised. Soap and water, clothes, the map. He had got some good friends, some very clever friends. He unlocked his bedroom door. He stood frozen, as if he had just saw a witch. It's not worth trying anything. I've got men around the place. In fact, there were only two men. Women too. Didn't you think the girl in reception was rather sweet? He sat on the chair. It was that bloody correction slip, I suppose. Well, there are a few people who know a little German. You know, it wasn't really a mistake. We hadn't been able to fix up any hotel. The really important thing was for the phone to ring just before the exam finished to get everyone out of the way for some minutes. So we had to know exactly when the exam started, didn't we? And like a fool, I presented you with that information on a plate. Well, someone did. So you see, sir, that correction slip killed two birds with one stone, didn't it? 1. The name of the hotel, and the exact time the exam started, for example. Nice name, though. Zum Golden in Lowen. For Golden Lion Hotel. How did you know which Golden Lion it was? There are hundreds of them. In the same way you did, Evans. Index number 313. Center number 271. Remember? If you take a map of Oxfordshire, you find that six-figure reference. 313 271st lands in Chipping Norton. Yeah, you're right. Huh, we hoped you would run off to Newberry. We did. Evans, could you really understand all that German in the question paper? I couldn't. I knew roughly what it was all about. The governor stood up. Tell me one thing before we go. How did you get all that blood to pour over your head? Clever, sir. Very clever. How to get some blood into a cell, eh? I don't know if I ought to tell you. After all, I might want to use that trick again. Anything to do with the rubber ring for hammeroids, perhaps? Clever, though, wasn't it? Must have been a tricky job. Nah. Sir. No problem about that. No? The problem is... Cotting of the blood. That's the big trouble. We got the blood easy enough. Pig's blood. But to stop it clotting, you've to mix your actual blood. With one-tenth of its volume, of sodium cheat rate. Didn't you know that, sir? We learn something new every day. Come on, boy. They walked to the reception. Tell me, Evans. How did you manage to plan all this business? You've had no visitors, no letters. I've got a lot of friends, though. What's that supposed to mean? My German teacher, for a start. You mean? But he was from the technical college. Was he? Ever checked up on him, sir? God Almighty. There's far more going on than I expected. Always will be, sir. Everything ready? The van is ready, sir. A silent prison officer handcuffed Evans, and together, they both clambered into the back seat of the prison van. See you soon, Evans. Cheerio, sir. I was just thinking. I know your German is pretty good, sir, but... Do you know any more of these modern languages? Not very well. Why? I just came to know that some O-level Italian classes are coming up next September. Perhaps you won't be with us next September, Evans. Maybe. As the prison van turned right to the Oxford Road, the prison officer unlocked Evans' handcuffs and told to the driver. Drive fast, driver. It won't take them long to find us out. Where do you suggest we make for? What about Newberry? <laughs> <laughs> Means. The silent officer who took him to prison van 
was his own man. So, it was Evans who had the last laugh, and the governor just turned out to be a fool.